polling. Early on in this yeah. race, you had a uh, decent lead. Now it looks as though it's uh, evaporated. Mm -hmm. What's going on? They didn't know Inslee, and a lot of Democrats weren't supporting him early on. And as the campaign's gone on, uh, Democrats have migrated over to support him. It's just as simple as that. So, but, <clears throat> I mean, according to the polls, you appear to be behind, so... What's the game plan? I'm not behind. We're this is uh, this race is tied, uh, and I'm either ahead or it's it's inside the margin of error according to our own research. But remember, I start with an eight point disadvantage because there are about eight percent more self-identified Democrats than Republicans. So he gets an eight point head start on me. I have to catch up to that and then pass it. And the way we're doing that is is I have a large lead among independents. I've still got uh, you know, a significant number of Democrats crossing over to support me, and I've got the base. Uh, this is going to be close. I mean, there's no reason the Democrats should be saying one about this. I mean, Gregoire didn't win until the third count uh, in, in 04, and some of us think she didn't win, but that's another, another story. So this is a state which is called blue, but in, really, in fairness, could be considered purple. You know, we, we came within a few thousand votes of having five instead of four of the nine congressional districts in the 2010 elections. That race, the race was that close in, in, in the second district with Rick Larson. You know, we're approaching uh, something closer to parity uh, in the legislature. We're three seats away from the majority in the Senate, eight seats away in the House. We're going to make gains. We've made gains in the legislature in every election since and including 2008, including the specials. Uh, this is a state which is, you know, it's always been like this. If, as long as I've been involved in politics. Sometimes you get a big pendulum move, as we saw in 94, where we ended up with seven Republican members of Congress, or in um, 2006 when it blew back the other way big time because of Iraq. So, look, yeah, I know how to win in this state. I've been elected twice by big margins. I've got lots of Democrats supporting me, uh, you know, led by Brian Sontag, the state auditor, and I've got uh, the independents with me. And I think that's happening because, A, they, they know my work as attorney general, and they like my work as AG. I mean, I've been bipartisan throughout my term, terms. We've passed 45 separate pieces of legislation that my office and I have written with a democratically controlled legislature and a democratic government. Forty-five times they've said, yeah, we like that idea, we're going to make it a law. And every time I introduce bills, I hear the same thing. Oh, your bills are never going to pass. They're never going to let you pass bills. And every time I get, I get people to help me. Lynn Kessler, prime sponsor, some of my key bills, especially in uh, the Public Records Act issues. Just she and Brian and I teamed up. We were the ones who teamed up to try to get uh, executive sessions recorded. Didn't do so well in that one. <laughs> but... I, you know, I, I, I know how to work across the aisle because that's what I have to do. And frankly, that's what I prefer to do. And I prefer it because when you enact change on a bipartisan basis, it's durable. If you enact change by running over the other side on a straight party line vote, not durable. That's what's happening with the Affordable Care Act right now. They, instead of compromising and passing, you know, some of it on a bipartisan basis, which is exactly how Medicaid was created and Medicare, they rammed it through because Obama thought that was more important than the economy. And I think he's paying a price for that.